Hello and welcome to this next tutorial in my little panoramic photography tutorial series. My name is Florian and I run the website pano.ie. Um, I've been fairly busy in the last half year because I've relocated from Ireland to Australia and it took me a little bit of uh, time to settle but I hopefully get back into making some more um, tutorials. Thank you to all of you who've sub subscribed. I get an email, one or two emails a day um, with new people having subscribed. That's great. Anyway, let's get right into it. One question that I get asked a lot, and that's at least <laughs> once a day, honestly, is um, people emailing me, and I appreciate your emails, thank you very much, emailing me, emailing me um, can I use this lens or can I use that camera to make uh, 360 degree panoramic photos? And the answer I always give them is yes, uh, you can use any lens, any camera you want. It's just a question of how many shots you will have to take in order to cover the full 360 by 180 um, field of view. So again, as you know, I personally really like panoramas which are completely spherical, so you can look in any direction you want. And um, in that case, you, you just need a certain number of images to, to have covered everything. So if you walk away from a spot and you didn't capture you know, every direction of view, then obviously you end up with a hole in your panorama. So there's a certain number of minimum images that you need to take. I personally like to shoot with a, an 8mm or now a 10mm fisheye lens. Um, that allows me to take as little as four images. But if you want high resolution panoramas or you don't have a fisheye lens like that, you can still get going. Um, the other advantage of using a, a very short focal length fisheye lens is that I can actually use it handheld as you saw in the very first tutorial. I can just very easily take a quick panorama, four shots and I'm done. Um, to find out how many images you actually need to take, um, there are some panorama calculators. Um, I haven't found one online which is really suitable to give you exactly all the numbers that you need to capture a 360 by 180 panorama. There is a, an iPhone um, tool which is called uh, PanoCalc, I think. Um, you can use that and that is quite complicated to use, but that actually tells you how many images you need to take. But it's much easier than this. If you just Google for panoramic lens database, as you can see up here, there's two quite um, quite useful sites that pop up. The first one is this vrwave.com uh, panoramic lens database website. And the second one is from um, 360 Precision. Um, I'll just uh, show you quickly the first one. That's uh, this one here. And um, let's just uh, start up here. You can get um, for the different uh, lenses you can have, um, but you know it, it's all a question of what's your sensor size, what's the lens type, is it a fisheye or a, rec a normal rectilinear lens, and then what is the focal length of that lens. So basically, um, you can get a list of um, of the different um, lenses you can put on your camera, and it tells you your shooting pattern. So as an example, your very standard kit lens that comes with uh, most of the Canon cameras. Um, it tells you here, well, you know, this is your field of views, um, that's all nice and well, but in, in order to take a full 360 uh, degree panorama, it tells you that you need to take 10 images every 36 degrees at minus 45 pitch. So that means you have your camera obviously in, in portrait, um, you dip it sort of 45 degrees below the horizon, you take 10 images going around, so every 36 degrees apart, 360, 360 divided by 10 is 36, and then you need to sec take a second row of images um, 36 degrees apart at zero pitch, so that's just straight around the horizon, and another set of 10 images around the um, plus 45 pitch. So that means with the kit lens at 18 millimeters on a crop camera, you need to take a minimum of 30 images. That's a lot of images, 30 compared to say just four with a fisheye lens. And you can immediately see why it is nicer to use a fisheye lens if you just want to get um, get it over and done with, uh, if you want to get your job over and done with. Um, to just show you some examples of um, what that would look like um, from different uh, things that I managed to dig out um, I'm very organized here. Let me just close all these windows. Um, here is some um, images that I shot with different lenses uh, on different um, cameras. So um, I'll just show you quickly what um, how I put these images together in PTGUI. Now, I'm, it, this is probably not the optimal or the minimum number of images you shoot, but um, this is what I did. So I used a 24 millimeter um, focal length on the full frame, and I had to take three times nine, that's 27 images. So um, three rows of nine images, and then another Nadia shot, that's the shot at the very bottom, to cover everything in here. Uh, another situation was with a 16mm fisheye lens on a full-frame camera. I had to take six shots around, uh, one up and one or two images down. Here's a different lens, and um, that's a 10mm rectilinear, so a normal wide-angle lens, 10mm wide-angle lens and a, on a crop sensor. 
And at the time, I took uh, two rows of nine images, and I did forget to take the, 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 the Nadia shot. I was too excited for that. But um, that was fairly easy to be edited. I could edit that out fairly easily. Um, but anyway, so that's another, what, 20, 21 images for this shot. Here's another one. That's an 8 millimeter fisheye lens now on a crop sensor. And that is, um, that's six images that are shot here. And I think that's also the pattern that I recommended in the, in the very first tutorial. Um, so that's four going around, one up and one down. And then the last one here, that's an 8 millimeter fisheye lens on a full frame camera. And that's just four shots. Um, and I got everything done. So that just shows you, you can have all, a whole range of different numbers depending on the sensor size and your, your lens size. Um, you can go absolutely ridiculous like uh, Jeffrey Martin did. And you get those kinds of things. We've got an 80 gigapixel image um, in London. You can see uh, these two dudes, they're having a, a smoke. Um, as you zoom out and out and out and out, you get to see the full, I mean, there's a bit, blob, a bit of a blob in the middle missing. But um, that's a fully spheric panorama. But um, from what I can, uh, could find out, Jeffrey had to shoot 8,000 images, about 8,000 images, and he used a 400 millimeter lens on a crop camera. So that just gives you an idea. You can really use any lens. Camera combination, it's just a question, a test of patience. And then obviously your computer hardware needs to be up to speed as well to put all these images together. Now, just one last thing that I wanted to mention, and, and another question that um, I get from people, they say, well, I've got an 8mm wide-angle lens, or I've got a 10mm a wide-angle lens um, on my crop camera. Um, can I use the same sort of things that you, um, the same sort of shooting patterns as you do with a fisheye lens? And the, the answer is no. Although they both say 8mm, I just um, took this comparison shot here, um, although they're both 8mm lenses, so the fisheye is here and the, the wide-angle lens is here, um, and all these four images been taken on the same uh, 1.5 times crop sensor. If you look exactly what is being captured, so we've got the lamp here on the eight millimeter fisheye lens, and there's loads of stuff. There's the balcony door and all that on the side here. Whereas with the normal eight millimeter lens, you don't see anything of that, that balcony door. So you need to take more images compared to the fisheye. Same story with a 10 millimeter wide angle lens versus 10 millimeter fisheye. Again, you see a lot more, you capture a lot more on the fisheye lens. So again, you get your balcony door down here, or you can, um, you see much more of the balcony on that side here as well, compared to the just normal 10 millimeter wide angle lens. So um, that really does make a difference if you get a fisheye lens or a, a normal lens. So um, yeah, that's uh, pretty much all I wanted to say today. So again, the short, or the short answer is yes, you can take, uh, you can make normal 360 by 180 panoramas with any lens and any camera. It's just a question of how many images you need. And obviously, if you need to say, if you need to take more than, than six images or so, you really would want to use a panoramic tripod head because otherwise, if you're not very precise in shooting all these images, then you're gonna, just going to have a pile of, of stitching problems. And the more images you have and the more images uh, overlapping you have, obviously, the more zones or the more areas for potential problems you're going to have. So less images is not only quicker to work with, but also less potential for error. That's why I personally really like using a, a 10 millimeter or eight millimeter fisheye lens for, for my panorama stuff. Obviously it's not as high um, resolution as you would get if you used a, a longer focal length lens. But again, for my purposes, that's perfectly fine. All right, that's it. Uh, thanks very much for your attention. And I might see you uh, again soon with another tutorial. I'm thinking about doing one for um, a, a pole panorama. And also I wanted to show you some more tricks, uh, stitching images. So watch the space. And um, yeah, if you like this, uh, send me an email. I always appreciate your feedback. Thanks very much and talk to you soon. Bye.